Hi everybody, this is Stampin' and Scrappin' with Donna Lee, um, and today I have been working on some Bible journaling um, in Matthew 1, and I was going to hop on here and share it with you and then finish up this page over here, um, but I'll, I'll start out with um, this first one. And, um, I'll let you know that I follow and, um, participate in the community over at First Five. There's an app for that. Um, trying to get my camera to focus. And, um, it's a, a Christian, um, devotion. It's a six days a week devotion and takes you like five minutes and there's an online community um and who you know can participate if they choose i'm gonna try to adjust my camera because i think it's falling um so um you don't you don't have to participate online um could take you longer if you do because you know if you start reading your comments take you longer than five minutes but you can always come back later in the day when you have a few minutes um but literally takes five minutes do the devotion you're going to read the scriptures um read the write-up that's done every day and i've just been really blessed by it and i'm so thankful um to lisa who started it um she started proverbs 31 ministries i believe and she's written some awesome books so um i encourage you hop over it's not just for ladies it is a lot of ladies but it's not just for ladies so i encourage you so um this week we started in matthew so of course we started in matthew 1 and um basically matthew 1 starts out with the genealogy of jesus christ and um I should mention that we just finished Genesis, the whole book of Genesis, which was amazing. And um, in Genesis, you know, you read about Judah, um, whose uh, children, surviving children, were um, Perez and Zerah by Tamar, who was actually his daughter-in-law, is actually Judah's daughter-in-law. She pretended to be a prostitute, um, and he had relation with her and um she became pregnant which was her desire um wanted children and those are the two of his children that survived and um judah is the one who you know he he knew selling his brother joseph into slavery um was wrong there was no question about that hi welcome um i'm sharing some bible journaling today on matthew one excuse me <clears throat> we had a little bit of a cold. Um, so I, I journaled on Matthew 1, which is the genealogy of Jesus. And I, what really stood out to me about this was, um, and, and the scriptures that I've highlighted is part of verse 3 and 5 and the last half of, um, or, or 6, basically. And basically, you know, we see that Judah begat Perez and Zerah by Tamar, which, like I said, was his daughter-in-law. And then we have um, Sam Salmon, who begat Boaz by Rahab, and Rahab was a prostitute. Um, and Boaz begat Obed by Ruth, and Ruth was a um, Moabite. Um, and if you know the story of Naomi, it's Naomi's Ruth, and I'm sorry, I need to adjust the camera here. Um, so, <coughs> I found it very interesting that, uh, you know, all of these people have stories. And then, of course, so, let me get back to that. So, Boaz beget Obed by Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse is the father of David, like King David. Um, and, of course, David the king begat Solomon. 
um, by her, doesn't mention Bathsheba's name, but it was Bathsheba by her who had been the wife of Uriah. So while, and remember that King David murdered Uriah um, because he had an affair with his wife and instead of losing face and owning up to what he'd done, um, he had her husband killed. And I find it very interesting that Uriah is remembered throughout scripture um, as being the husband of Bathsheba. So he has not been forgotten, although he was murdered and it was not right. Um, he has not been forgotten. And I think it's important today and every day, but especially today after what happened in Paris, um, that we remember the victims. We do not need to sensationalize, rationalize the people who did this. We need to remember the victims. We need to know their names. We need to be praying for them if you're a Christian. Um, and we just need to remember them. We need, we need, to, we need to remember the victims. And, and Uriah was a victim. Um, you know, and David, David was a man after God's own heart but it doesn't mean that he was perfect. Um, and then, you know, it goes on all the way down and, and uh, came down here to the end, verse 16, and it says, And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. And my take on this, this part of Matthew 1, Matthew 1, verse 1 through 16, is that, from Abraham to Jesus Christ and everywhere in between, life got messy. And there were plenty of thorns in the flesh and spirits of each life. Things were not perfect until Jesus came to the earth. Even Jesus suffered the worst thorns. Um, and all the sin in the world was put upon him but God. And every time the scriptures say, but God, when you're reading the word and you see, but God, you really need to pay attention because that is a turning point. And that's when the Holy Spirit shows and reveals to us through the word that what is being changed because God, but God, but God raised Jesus up. Um, and in Christ, we were raised up with him and we will live in heaven with him because he is our Lord. And that, that's basically what my journaling says right here. Um, so for my art part of this, I took the, a, a crown, um, and you know, just go to the internet, look for, um, I think I put in king's crown, something like that, and came up with a basic drawing of a crown, and then back here behind it, and y'all, I don't draw very well, so forgive me, but um, the, these are thorns back here, because you know that when 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 he was crucified, they had put a crown of thorns. The soldiers had put a crown of thorns and shoved it into his skull, um, which was incredibly painful for him. Um, so he wore both. He wore a crown of thorns. He suffered, and he did it all willingly for our sake. So. Um, you know, and Jesus was not a victim. Jesus did what he did because he loved us. And when, when we celebrate Easter, we remember and we read and we meditate on the fact that when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed and asked the Father, if there is any way out of this suffering, I would like to be out of it but not my will, but yours be done. And he submitted, even unto death he submitted. So he was never a victim. Um, but even so, in all his perfection, he was fully human and fully God. And he submitted to the authority of his father. And, um, you know, he did it for us. He did it out of love for us, love for the father and love for us. Um, and there is great reward. So when we go through hard times, and um, if you know what happened in Paris, and you remember 9-11 in this country, and other events that have happened around the world, um, you know, 
we're going to go through hard times. Bad things happen to good people. Um, but there are some rewards in being a Christ follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. And, you know, to be a disciple, it means we need to have a relationship with him. And the best way to have a relationship with him is through this word. Um, and if you're new to the faith or you're just beginning to explore your faith, I hope, I pray that you will start with the book of John and um, read John. If you've never read the Bible, read the book of John, the gospel of John, not John 1 or John 2. Um, you need to read those two, but start with, with the book of John. But um, and, and my devotion, you know, I'm doing Matthew right now, so that's where I am. So that is... Um, the first half of Matthew 1 journaling that I did. And so the second half I'm going to share with you if I don't run out of time. And um, so the scriptures that I've highlighted for the second half of Matthew 1 is verse 19 um, all the way to the end. And it talks about Joseph. And it says, then Joseph um, her husband, talking about Mary, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So Joseph understood from the get-go um, what the plan was for Jesus, although he clearly did not know how it was going to play out. He understood what he, 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 I'm sorry, he was given um, some insight as to what would happen. So, and my camera is just not a good setup, so I apologize. I'll try to figure this out before I do this again. Um, so, um, what I thought I would do is, um, and of course it goes on to say, that, um, you know, all of this that was done, all of history that was played out here, um, was done so that the prophecy of the Old Testament would be fulfilled. And Jesus is the only person recorded history who has fulfilled all of the prophecies in the Old Testament, which is what the Jewish people follow. He, he fulfills every single prophecy in the Old Testament. And you have to understand, or I hope you understand, that this Bible was written by 40 authors, possibly more. 40 different authors throughout different times of history, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It was written, and it all points to one person, and that one person is Jesus Christ. Um... So, you'll see in the New Testament that, as, we, as you read the New Testament, that they will point back to the prophecies that Jesus fulfills, and he fulfills every prophecy, <coughs> excuse me, every prophecy about the Messiah, which is what, who the Jews are looking for to come. So, um, that's, that's what this scripture refers to, and let me just tell you what I've been using. I'll show you too. So um, I like to use gelatos. I have some gelatos here. Yes, amen. So be it. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and, and just, I don't know about y'all, but we just need to pray for people's salvation because we need to save as many as we can. You know, we need to lead them to Jesus. Jesus does the saving. We don't. But um, then I use these um, watercolor pencils. They're awesome. They're from Stampin' Up. I bought these, y'all, at a yard sale. How about some $2 for this set of watercolor pencils? So, shop your yard.